Here we go. We are live. The Full Send iRacing Podcast. Episode number two. And uh, hey, I'm glad everyone's here. Hope that everyone's having a good night. And hey, tonight we have a, a really special guest. It's the ever-famous Lou Oleski himself of Beast Racing. Go ahead and say hey, Lou. Hey, everybody. Thanks for stopping by tonight. All right. So, so you know, if you're watching this, you probably already know who Lou Oleski is. But let me... Let me give you a little rundown of Lou, and he's a humble dude, so you'll you'll never hear this from his mouth. But uh, Lou's been on iRacing. Lou, how you been on? How long you been on iRacing for now? Uh, going on four years. Four years. Yeah, Lou's been on iRacing for about four years, and uh, he he was really known for his short track racing, and his battle for the overall championships in iRacing in, in the late models. Um, but he really started building a name for himself by taking scrubs like me, <laughs> teaching us how to do setups and putting us out on the track, and. Uh, the, the funny thing is, hey Steve, the funny thing is when I first started racing, late models, um, after about 10 o'clock, you would not have any races going official um, because the participation rate in that was low. Well, Lou started working with people and he, he hopped into the A51 community and started teaching guys how to set them up, um, teaching them how to drive the tracks, uh, really invested his time in it. Now, even to this day, you can still feel the ripple effect of that because even now at about midnight, or even two in the morning, you still have two splits of late model racing. And that is most certainly because of Mr. Lou Oleski. Uh, he's now running with the Beast Racing. He's uh, he's helped building the Oval Team over there, which I am now happily a part of. And uh, you can usually catch him over on the Podium um, uh, Elite Series, running the Silver Races. And uh, he is extremely popular over there uh, on that podcast. So if you could just say, hey, one more time, Lou. Tell everyone out there that's... Uh, you're glad they're here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, guys, thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. All right, so Lou, let's just let's just hop right in, man. I mean, there's there's so many things that people want to know about you, and unfortunately, because you're so busy, uh, it kind of adds to your legend, Lou. Uh, you're kind of mysterious because you don't have all this time to dump in it. So you hear stories about Lou, and because he can't answer for a couple of days because he's uh, uh, racing or he's working so much, they kind of to grow on that and. And Lou, you won't believe how many stories I've heard about you, um, you know, lapping the field twice and wishing guys good luck and just being a nice guy. And um, so, I guess the first question is, how did you get into iRacing? racing? What brought you over to it? Well, you know, growing up, I've always been a, a racing fan, not necessarily NASCAR um, or anything on asphalt. I've always been a dirt fan, um, but just being competitive uh, I wanted to find something that I can do competitively um, in my spare time and believe it or not it all started out uh, playing Grand Theft Auto 5 there was a racing community in Grand Theft Auto 5 um, huge racing community which is weird but I, I didn't play the game other than for anything but the racing and then uh, it, I just got into uh, more online racing and on YouTube I found a, a, I think it was a Matt Malone video of him playing, or no, you know what? It wasn't Matt Malone. It was True Racer. I seen a true uh, video from True Racer um, about this eye racing, and I was like, man, I got to do that, and it, it went from there. Yeah, True Racer. I watch him often. He actually races carts in real life too, and he's really good. That guy is awesome. So yeah. yeah. So, so it started. It started with Grand Theft Auto Racing. And that's the funny. That's funny, Lou, that you mentioned that because I've actually heard of that before. Like, there's. Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely, Aaron. There's a big community in that, and they actually have different cars, and I guess there's different setups you can run in the new, uh, in the new Grand Theft Auto, isn't there? Uh, not necessarily setups. Every car has, I, I mean, you can, you can tune the cars, but there's no real tuning, uh, you know what I mean? But it's, uh, so everybody's pretty much on the, on an even playing. Yeah. Yeah, so Aaron says, uh, props for being a founder of the community, and yeah, that's true, too. Lou, uh, Lou really helped build up the A51 community, huge part of that, and helped. Man, Lou, there are so many slow guys you help get fast, me being one of them. Lou picking up the scrub when I had, like, a, I think I had 1,200 I rating, and uh, learning how to drive the short tracks got me faster than everyone else. So, yeah, Aaron says thanks. I say thanks as well. So, <clears throat> let's just hop, keep going right into it. This new aero package that's in iRacing, you and I talked a little bit about this before uh, before the stream. Um, I give it kind of a thumbs like this. I think it produces fun racing. The only thing I don't like about it is that I think it gives um, slower guys 
um, kind of a, a handicap over the faster guys. Um, what's what is your opinions of this aero package thus far, as far as the A car goes in i racing? Yeah, it's it's funny that you mentioned that handicap. I said the same exact thing on the uh, on the podium uh, stream. Uh, it it enables somebody um, with a limited skill set in in the A car uh, like myself to keep up with some of the much faster drivers. Um, and for me, that makes it better, uh, makes it more fun for me because now I can compete in that car with people that in the previous car were just whooping me um, <laughs> on, on intermediate tracks. So, I mean, I, I enjoy it, but I, I can definitely understand why some of the better drivers don't like it because it's, like I said, you're, you're neutering the big dogs is what you're doing. Yeah, in a way. But, but in another sense, Lou, um, with this new momentum-based um package where it's all about keeping that momentum and and uh that takes some skill too and you really start to see that as the tires fall off and and uh, that's one thing i do like about this package um you do have to drive better when the tires fall off and and they brought this up on the podium stream when you were at california but uh you short track drivers or you late model drivers with underpowered cars really do seem to have a good advantage with this new package because it's all about momentum yeah, and, and I'll agree with that too. Um, definitely later on in runs, uh, the later the races get, I feel like I, I get more competitive um, just because I am used to keeping the car um, with a, a good amount of momentum through center. So that, that definitely does help. I, I, I'll definitely agree there. And I think it's going to be different at, at, at different tracks. You know what I mean? I, I don't think it's going to feel the same as Atlanta at Atlanta as it did at Texas. You know what I mean? Where I, I think at Atlanta, you're not going to need to be as much as a momentum driver as you are just really, really consistent with your line. So you're, you're not killing your tires. Yeah. It's a, uh, you know, Michigan, my, my home track, my favorite track, one of my best tracks, I think is going to turn into one of my worst tracks now um, because it was really just having that track down and knowing when to pick that throttle back up. And with it turning into what it is now, I just see myself getting a bunch of wrecks and stuff. So, but I think in Michigan's another track that you're going to be fast at as well. Because, you know, pretty much the sister track of California. So it'll be interesting to see how you do. So what would you say, Lou? Do you give it a thumbs up? Do you like it? Thumbs down? Or just, you know, let's see where it goes. As a driver um, with my skill in that car, I give it a thumbs up because it just makes me look better than I am. Oh, um I also enjoy watching the races more because, like, for example, like the, the peak antifreeze races, really, really fun to watch. Oh, yeah. Um, but then I also give it, like, a, not so much a thumbs down, but kind of a thumbs in the middle. Um, for the drivers who did put the work into the, the A cars and, and got extremely fast in them, and now they're, like I said, they're kind of neutered. Yeah, that's true. The A car before was by far the hardest car to hang on to, at least in the oval side of racing. And, you know, you had to get really good of knowing how much throttle to use and driving off those rear tires on the corners. And it seemed like that is completely gone now. And so it's interesting to see who's going to be fast and peak here because of this new package. Because I don't think it's going to be the same as it has been over the, the past few years. Yeah, I don't think it is either. I, I think things are going to get shook up pretty pretty big time this season, which is, which makes it fun. Yeah. Pretty cool. And that, that I was talking to Aaron about that last week. He didn't catch it yet. But the finish to that peak race was out of the... All right. You got me, Lou. Sorry about that, everyone. We got dropped there uh, for some unknown reason. But you, you got me, Lou? Yeah, I got you, buddy. Okay, we're back live. So sorry about that. I'm not sure what caused that, but we are going again. And uh, we were just talking about... <laughs> yeah, we're back here. Who turned out the lights? We're back. I don't know what caused that. Everything else was working. It was just the stream. So, interesting. So, Lou, did you catch uh, Drew's stream last week about the new paint? Did you happen to catch the news about the new paint schemes and the new numbers and stuff like that? I was in and out of it briefly, um, but I haven't really been following it too much since I'm not much of a paint. So, I, I don't have uh, too much knowledge on it. Okay. We're just going to cover it for the, the sake of the stream today. No, we're back, Thomas. I promise. So what, what this means is, now when you do paint schemes for iRacing, um, you now can export a second file, and on this file you actually paint the numbers on yourself. And so when you turn the numbers off in the graphics options, it'll show the custom numbers in, in iRacing. 
So it won't take the first paint file, it'll take the second paint files that everyone has um, with the new paint, painted numbers on there. And it will also, so let's say somebody doesn't have one of those files in there, it'll still do the original. So just something really cool, guys. Uh, we're not going to talk much about that today, but just so you guys who are watching, we touch all the iRacing news. You can now put custom numbers on your paint schemes. <laughs> I've got like... I'm not even joking. I have at least 15 schemes I have to fix for some of the guys in A51. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that'll be fun. So I know we'll yeah, be. Yeah, that that is a really cool up, update that they did, though. Um, mm -hmm. you, you know, like a lot of the guys really wanted to be able to, to put their own numbers on. That's really cool that I recently listens to uh, to their customers like that. What a workaround for that too. That is a that's huge to actually reprogram it to read a second paint file. Oh man, yes, it's Lou. Hey, hey Nick, how you doing? Okay, so we'll just keep moving on. Yeah, she must be Zimmy. That's exactly what it is. So, so guys, anyone, anyone that's ever talked to Lou outside of a race, or you know, it used to be Lou would hang out in the the voice comms, and we we would just shoot the breeze with them. And one time, I was speaking with Lou, and he and he told me about this interesting medical condition that he has. Lou, why don't you tell us about um, this medical condition you have and maybe some of the pros and cons of it. Yeah, um, it, it's different uh, for sure. Um, it, what it is, it's uh, basically a, a really extreme version of chronic insomnia um, to where I am I literally stay awake for days and days and days and days at a time without any sleep. Um, and then about once a month, I crash and get like two days worth of sleep all at once. It's pretty crazy. So, how long will we go without sleeping, though? That's the crazy part, right? Uh, it can go anywhere between five and seven days, and then I'll get a couple hours, like maybe an hour or two, and then five or seven more days, and then I'll get another hour or two, maybe three. Oh my god! Another five or seven days, yeah, <laughs> and then and then about every thirty days is whenever I just go down for the count. For... You believe that he uh <laughs> Christmas shoes. I don't think you guys heard that. He can go five to seven days without sleeping. Wow. And so it was funny because I remember speaking with Aaron. I was like, I don't know how Lou is doing this, building all these sets and running all these races and doing all this stuff. This is back when you weren't working so much. And uh, and it turns out you didn't have to sleep. And I guess that, that's that's great now. But what does that mean for you long term as far as health goes? Well, there's, there's a lot of different health risks involved with it. Um, it what it is, it's, it's a genetic mutation. Mm. Um, your PRNP gene is what lets you, it, it's what tells your body to sleep. It, what it does is it, it produces proteins in your body. Um, those proteins are, are your restorative um, makeup. And with the genetic dis defect that I have, um, it keeps me from sleeping. Um, but it didn't change the portion of the protein. I, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but the, the thing that makes the proteins, it didn't change the portion of it that prevents me from going into sleep and getting REM uh, sleep, which is basically how your body regenerates. Um, people that usually get this disease, it's called FFI, if anybody wants to look it up, um, fatal uh, familiar insomnia. Um, and people that normally get it, they, they go have the same exact symptoms as me, but then when they do fall asleep at the end of a month, um, they don't go into REM. And it ends up, in about a year, year and a half, they end up dying from it. Whoa. So, yeah, so I mean, I, I got really lucky that I, I, I don't have that specific mutation of it, and mine is very rare. There's only been like two or three cases that I know of uh, that people have the same thing. Yeah, so we, we have it up on the screen right now, and it's showing um, brain activity over here, and it looks like those who have it, it's completely different from those, you know, who are normal. So it's weird. It's kind of a, a blessing and a curse at the same time. That is, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, but it's, so. it's scary, though, because at any time, um, I, I, it, it can go to that. You know what I mean? So you never know. Um, but, I mean, I've had it for 13, 14 years now, so... I mean, it, it looks like everything is cool, but, you know, at any time, who knows, but I, I think we'll be. Calvin wants to know how many people, you said it was pretty rare, but do you have any idea about how many people actually have this? 
Um, FFI isn't as rare as you would think. Um, a lot of people will come get FFI. Um, which rare is the G mutation that I have where when you do fall asleep, it, en en it en enables you to go into REM. And for what I know, from what I know, there's only been two or three other documented cases of that. Man. Yeah, I'm just reading up on it. Thankfully, it looks like a lot of people still live long and healthy lives with it, which is hard to believe with how much sleep you're missing out on. But it looks like um, the age of from 18 to 60. So was it like this since you were a kid, or did it did it come about when you were uh, middle-aged? Uh, I was about 20. About 20? Okay. About 20 when, I, when it first started happening. Wow. Aaron wants to know, does Lou get hit up for medical studies? <clears throat> yes. Yes, sleep studies all the time. <laughs> um, and not just that, though, just like things that uh, they can do to testing, um, blood tests and stuff like that to see um, what's being produced in my body that's enabling me to go into REM um, when the other gene sequences are, are firing, telling me that, hey, I shouldn't be asleep right now. Mm. Oh man, that's pretty. That's that's interesting. Do they pay you for these studies or no? No. Well, so Lou's just doing it out of the kindness of his heart. Boy, where have we seen that before, iRacers? <laughs> All right, Lou. So there's there's a there's a certain someone we got to talk about, and that is Aunt Shar. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How did how did Aunt Shar get on iRacing? So for those of you who don't know, Lou has an aunt, and how old is she? between 70 and 80 i don't know <laughs> somewhere let's, in there she's let's just say okay we're not gonna call her old but she's up there okay and she races on i racing and at one point i think she had an i rating above 3500 didn't she no nah, she's never been that high she's been in in the upper twos mid twos but i don't think she's ever cracked three well i might be wrong but I don't... here's the deal aunt char is fast <laughs> okay she is fast. Matter of fact, she ran some league races with us, and and you know the league races that we run, I'll, that's a fast league. And she was keeping up with them boys even after being rusty after about a few months of being out. So how in the world did she get on that racing? How did that happen? <laughs> well, she is a massive, massive racing fan. Um, she has been her whole life. Um, she actually raced in real life. Um, she raced late model, dirt late models. Um, and she's, and modified, and she's just a badass, man. And, uh, whenever she's seen what I was doing on iRacing, I sent her one of my links to, uh, a stream that I did and she immediately knew she wanted to do it. You know what I mean? She's too old now to jump into a, a late model anymore. So she's doing the next best thing. Man, that's insane. Huge thank you to, 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 to Rachel for those biddies. We appreciate it. She gave 500 heart biddies for Lou, It's Me Randy, The Beast Racing, and A51 Family. We definitely appreciate that, Rachel. Rachel's one of your biggest supporters in Podium as well. And so, oh, She's awesome. And I'm so glad. And we, I met her through happenstance, through somebody else's stream. And I'm so glad that I stumbled on that other stream because she's just an a A-plus person. Yeah, super rock solid. As you, boy, if you look at my supporters, she's putting me through college, so we definitely appreciate that. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. I got two mics. <laughs> we'll talk about that at the end of the stream, how I got this one. Let's hide that one there a little bit. <laughs> so, Aunt Char is super fast. Is she still racing, Lou, or, or is she kind of doing other things now? Um, She jumps on every once in a while. She doesn't race as much as she used to. Um. And she has some uh, some medical issues um, that makes her take some drugs, and she doesn't like getting on the track when she's medicated um, because strange things do happen. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and she just doesn't want to be that person that takes other people out because of a uh, lapse of, of concentration. I understand that. Okay. So you said um, Aunt Shire, she's got some real-life racing experience. Uh, you've been on the track as well in real life, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What What did you uh, What did you race? Uh, Legends, um, six fifty GS XR engine in a legend car um, at a really, really, really short track, short dirt track, uh, mm -hmm. Deerfield Raceway in Ohio. 
man, were you were you as dominant out there as you were in iRacing, or did you have? I, I can imagine equipment's a big deal, especially with like local short tracks. Yeah, I was not dominant um, at all. It, it's uh, I was a not even a mid pack guy. I was running at the end of the mid pack basically, um, and, and it, it is a lot of equipment, um, and it, it's just. I don't know, man. I, I just really, I mean, I enjoyed it. I loved it, you know, but I, I couldn't see putting as much money as some of these guys were putting into this, these little legends cars. They are, actually aren't legends. They, they run on a legend chassis, but it's, it's built a little bit different. But I mean, there's guys out there spending $5,000 on their shocks. You know what I mean? I, I just couldn't justify it. Oh my you know, gosh. spending that kind of money. Yeah. That's a funny thing. That's, that's one of the things too. I didn't, I didn't talk about this before, but that's one of the reasons I got an iRacing too. Cause I was telling my wife, I don't care. We got to buy me some equipment so I can go out to the local track and race it. And so we tried iRacing, racing, and it, it 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 scratched the itch for me. Like when I race iRacing, racing, I have no desire to go out to the local track anymore. What about you? Does it do the same for you, Lou? Yes and no. Um, I, I don't get the same type of adrenaline rush I do is when I'm on you know in the car or on the bike. But uh, it 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 scratches the competitive. Uh, urges and the competitive drive that I get that I have yeah yeah so all right Lou well we've got uh you got an awesome start in iRacing you got involved with a really good community helped build it up I mean I remember when there's 20 guys in the discord and now there's you know hundreds and it's really active and and you were a big part of that you sign a deal with Beast Racing tell, tell us all how that happened how did you get involved with Drew and, and Beast Racing and, and their deal all right, so it all started um, with Cisco uh, Scaramucha. Um, he was a producer for LSR TV, and um, when he was producing for them, uh, iRacing came up with the idea, well, hey, let's hire you guys on to come and broadcast directly for us um, with RaceBot TV and everything, that, all the deals that went through there. And uh, Cisco reached out to me and was like, hey, you know, you're – you're always moderating for us. Why don't you come over here and do it for iRacing? You know, they're paying our moderators. Um, come over here and do what you do. So I said, yeah. So I started working for them. I worked uh, for them for a couple months. And then I just it so happened to get into a race with Drew. And uh, I lapped him a couple times. And he's like, hey, are you the same, are you the same Lou uh, that works for me? I was like, are you Drew from iRacing? He's like, yeah. I was like, well, then, yes, that's me. He's like, you're fast. You want to <laughs> come join the team? And it started, you know, that's, that's where it started right there. Yeah. So he didn't know you from like the forums or anything or like just the legend of Lou. He, he just met you in that race. That's how it happened. Yeah. Yeah. We, we met in that race. I mean, I, me and him talked quite a few times in discord, um, but it was all about business, you know, all about the, the iRacing esports network. And, and uh, because I, uh, I was the lead moderator for that. Mm -hmm. is that, that's what my title was. So I, I was in direct contact him with that, but I've never shared track time with him. He didn't even know what my eye rating was. Um, he just knew that I was a good moderator and I was always. Yeah. That's true. Like if, Oh, sorry. You cut out there. Go ahead. Oh yeah. I was going to say, so that's, you know, that's where it started when I got on the track with him the first time and uh, he seen how fast I was. He was like, man, he's like, well, I know you're, you know, you're dedicated to the sport. He's like, why don't you come over and, and uh, join the team for the on the oval side. We're looking to build an oval side because they have a pretty good road side. Yeah, that's like, yeah, man. Let's get it done. That's another thing about Lou too. If you ever watch any of the iRacing broadcasts, um, it doesn't seem to matter which one. I know there are a few times I'll go over and I'll watch like some road road series that I've never seen before. I'll head on over there. I'll start watching a few laps and I'll just type in the chat, "Hey Lou," <laughs> and I always get a "Hey man" right back. <laughs> so. It's always funny how that works out. So if you watch the iRacing broadcast, make sure you feel out and see if Lou's there. Just give him a halo, and he usually responds right back, which is really cool. Um, yeah, I'm there probably 80% of the time. Yeah, he does a good job with that too. All right, Lou, so now we know that you're kind of in a season in your life right now where you're working a lot, and you're kind of focusing on family. And, uh, yeah, you used to work with him, Nick. That's cool. And uh, so what does this mean for your racing career going forward i know you had planned on wanting to try road to pro this year but i think something's kind of gotten in the way right uh just work i mean that's 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 what it is you know i, I used to have tuesdays off and they changed uh my schedule completely because you know they just needed me to work on tuesdays it's one of our busiest days now 
and uh, yeah. you know, I, I, I can't I can't say yes to iRacing racing and no to work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I get that. So, as much as I'd yep, like and, to. <laughs> yeah. So so right now, um, I, I very rarely have the ability to get on iRacing racing with as busy as we are right now. Um, I, we were talking earlier. I think my last race was over, over a week ago. Man. So it's it's been a minute, but uh, eventually when we slow down, we did hire on some new people up at work, um, which is going to lighten the load off of me tremendously. So once that happens, I'm going to be back in eye racing and, and running a lot more. Will there be any chance to see you back on them short tracks in the late model? Um, no, I think I'm going to go to the, the cup car full time. Um, I really, really enjoy the late model stuff, uh, but it's it's so... It consumes me when I get into it just because I love the car so much, mm-hmm. um, and, and that's all I'll do. Uh, if, if I if I start running late models again, that's all I'll do. I, I won't work on the cup cars. I won't work on the trucks. Um, it'll just be late models. So I, I think I'm probably going to run late model or the uh, uh, the A cars full time, and then just for fun, I'll probably do mostly dirt. Yeah, that'll be fun to watch you in dirt. And by the way, if you guys didn't know, if you if you just look up uh, I E S and Lou on YouTube, you can look at his YouTube channel, and he actually, boy, you watch some of his, like, rally streams in the VR, it is amazing, it's like, holy cow, he's fast, he says he's slow, but you know fast when you see fast, so go ahead and check out his YouTube channel, and uh, you're going to start doing a little bit more streaming once you once you get some time too as well, right? Yeah, yeah, I definitely want to start that back up again as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah, a lot of guys in Chatterson, they want to learn dirt, but we're all so bad at it. I mean, you guys have seen my street stocks, man. I'm I'm terrible at it. So maybe Lou's going to usher us into the dirt racing, too. <laughs> that Wouldn't that be something? Oh, it'd, it'd be fun to get the uh, the A51 crew uh, doing dirt. And uh, we'd all be starting out on the same foot because I'm not that fast at dirt either. Um, I got a pretty high I rating, but that's I, I kind of lucked into it. So it's... Uh... It's it's a good time though. I really enjoy the dirt side of things. I'm missing the Rex, yeah. That's how we. That's all I gotta. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I guess there's a question then. I, you know, I'm kind of new to beast racing. Does beast racing do any dirt things right now? Not right now. No. Um, we're looking to open up that avenue soon. Um, we're gonna try to round out our oval stuff right now, and then uh, once we do that, then we'll probably start digging into dirt a little bit. Yeah, because dirt is starting to get really popular. I know when I see they're streaming the like the World of Outlaws on YouTube, um, the viewership on that is just up. It seems like a lot of people want to start running dirt now too, which would be a lot of fun. Maybe we'll see Lou Oleski on the top of those charts one day. <laughs> I don't know about that. Them, some of them guys, I, I can't figure out where they're getting their speed from, but uh, I'll definitely give it a shot. Yeah. All right, Lou, this is the moment that everyone has been waiting for. Uh, as you all know, Lou, um, as he just said, he is just the king of the short tracks. He hates that title, but I call him it anyways. I call him it in the podium races. <laughs> he's like, oh, I'm not the king, man, but he really is. He knows what he's doing. He knows how the car should run. He knows how to set him up. So um, let's talk a little bit about short track racing. What is it about short track racing that you love so much? And you, you just said it yourself, it's addicting. What is it about that short track that just calls to you? Well, the main thing is the community in the late models is better than any other racing community on the sim on the mm-hmm. oval side. Mm-hmm. Um, it's such a tight knit community. The the fastest of the fast guys know who the slowest of the slow guys are, and you know what I mean. It's just tight knit. You know what I mean. And they're all most people are willing to help out, and that's what really draws me to that that yeah. series. Um, but then the other thing is just the competitiveness of it. Um, it's, you know, you're, you're taking a car that should be on a much bigger track because it's, it's as fast as it is, um, and, and you're putting it on a small track, and you're putting 20 other guys right next to you. You know what I mean? I, I just get a, a, a rush out of that, knowing that everybody's so close together, and, and one mistake can just lead to a, a full field catastrophe. Well, that's true, and, 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 you know, in iRacing, in the late model series, there are no yellows. So one mistake and you are done. There's no clawing back from it. So there's that kind of rush, you know, like if you mess up, this race is over for you and you're going to get hit hard in the I rating department, especially for you. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. If I, if I get hit, hit hard on the track, my I rating gets hit even harder <laughs> after the race is over. Yeah. 
I think Lou, you had a you had up to six k at one point, didn't you? Uh, sixty seven hundred was my peak. Man, man, that's awesome. So as you can imagine, uh, of running on short tracks, I mean, you, you know, you're just gonna get into people. It happens. Um, you know, tempers flare. And one discussion I love to have with the other late model drivers is uh, short track racing etiquette. When is it okay to bump somebody out of the way? When is it okay, you know, to get a little bit of physical and move them? And when is it not? I mean, wh what's your opinion on, on moving a guy out of the way, Lou? And um, a lot of people would love to hear this from you. It's always okay to move somebody out of the way as long as you're doing <laughs> it the right way. Um, I always tell people there's a big difference between a bump and run and a dump and run. Um, mm -hmm. If you get into the back of my car and you push me ever so slightly up the track and you get underneath me, hey, that's racing. You know what I mean? Um, but if you hit me so hard that it sends me up into the wall and my race is over, then that's not cool. You know what I mean? So, the, you know, that, that's where I draw the line. If, if you move me up the track, I'm, I'm completely fine with that. Um, but, you know, you put me in the wall, that's, that's where I kind of get upset. Um, and then also as far as driving side by side with the way that the, the model is, the damage model is right now, I don't mind when people lean on my car a little bit. Um, I try not to lean on a, on an outside car when I'm on the inside at all, just because of how the physics model is. Um, but you know, it, it, it's, it's a hard argument to have there because in real life there's, there's a ton of leaning on, on cars on the outside. Oh yeah. So, I mean, I, I personally don't like when people lean on me, but it's, it's hard to really be upset about it. So you heard, you heard it here, guys. Lou said it's always okay to move a guy out of the way. And you, you know, the more I think about it, when I first got in eye racing, it was all like, you know, I'll give a guy a couple laps, and then, you know, if he holds me up anymore, then I'll do it. But the more I've been running this league and, and doing the short track racing, I realize, you know, guys don't get mad about it if you do it the right way. It's just being able to move someone in eye racing is extremely hard, right? <laughs> Without wrecking. Yeah, it's it's real hard to do without wrecking somebody. And that's, that's, that's where, like you said, the etiquette comes along. Like if I'm racing, for example, if I'm racing James Curl or uh, Daniel Williamson, and for whatever reason, I'm, I'm fast enough to be able to keep up with them that race, you know, I'm going to be a lot less likely um, to, to stick it on one of their grills or one of their bumpers um, in fear of wrecking them out. than if I'm running somebody that I'm, way faster than enough i'm way faster than somebody and they're they're slowing me up yeah i'll i'll put the bumper on them a little bit and, and move them up out of the way um but it's it's still a dangerous thing to do just because again it's the damage model in the car oh yeah who knows how that kinetic energy is going to transfer whenever you put the bumper on somebody yeah that that's the good news is with this new damage model coming up you know when you hit someone it's not going to register on the entire side of the whole car and bounce them up I guess it's going to be specific to the area that you, that you touch them in, and uh, that that'll be really cool seeing how you can perform the bump and run in the new damage model. But I guess the question a lot of people would ask then is in i racing, how can you get to someone's bumper and move them out of the way without wrecking them? Like, what's what's the strategy there? Because I know um, right now I could probably move them out of the way about seventy percent of the time. The other thirty percent, I'm going to wreck them just because I'm not good at it yet. Yeah, my big thing is, is I never touch anybody uh, through center. Um, if I'm going to make contact with somebody, I do it before um, before the apex or right after the apex. Um, if I do it right after the apex, it's because I want to get them. I want to give them that loose feeling in the rear end and have them lift off the throttle. Then I'll drive under them mm -hmm. uh, down the straightaway. Um, if I do it before uh, the apex, and it's usually pretty early on in into the turn. You know what I mean in the turn in sequence. Uh, I'll get onto their bumper, give them a little bit of a nudge, just fast enough to where they're not going to be able to stick on that white or yellow line, and I can I can work my way under there through center and then on exit. Yeah. So is it like when you're going into the corner, it's almost like you're forcing them to overdrive it and to give you that room to to get under them? Yeah. Um. And, and that, that's exactly what I do when I do it. But um, you have to be real careful that you're timing your braking and their braking uh, very well, because if not, you're going to hit them too hard and then sends them up the track into the wall um it, it's it's like i said it, it's it's just really hard to do um but you know you can do it i mean i, I do it not all that often but you know when i have to I, i'll i'll put yeah. the bumper on somebody yeah because when you um i know when you get the highest levels of the short track racing 
everybody's so close in speed, the only way you're going to initiate a pass is sometimes is give them a little bump going into the corner. So um, pay attention, those who are listening, and want to get a little bit better at short track racing because sometimes you will have to use the bumper uh, something. By the way, pay attention when the leagues. I'm going to start doing a little bit more. <laughs> yep, and then also remember, too, like when somebody puts the bumper on you, you got to remember, hey, you know what I mean? I've done it to people. They're doing it to me. You yeah. can't get mad about it. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, that's that's one thing I want to talk about, too. We're actually getting into this, Lou. Um, and I would agree with the assessment. It's it's okay to put the bumper to somebody um, if you need to get around them and, and they're not letting you around. That's absolutely okay. And let's talk about some rivalries you've had, Lou. And, uh, you know, the funny thing is um, I, I've seen videos of Lou where guys have completely blinked out in front of them. They unblink. They're in the inside wall and smoking. And they just start cussing Lou out. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Lou? <laughs> yeah, I've been there more times than I care to remember. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, as far as rivalries go, um, my favorite rivalry that I've ever had on the sim is actually with my best friend on the sim, one of my best friends on the sim, Chris Carroll. Mm. Um, me and him had some killer races um, back in the day. Um, and it was, a, like I said, friendly robbery. We never, uh, I don't think we've ever even had an argument. Um, great, great guy to ride with. And we were so close in speed, so close in speed. And that's what makes good robberies. You know, it's not somebody that's faster than you and you're just wrecking with them all the time. It's somebody that's at your skill level and you're just battling every single race. And that's what me and him had. And that's, that's what made it so fun. Um, yeah. and then there's also some, some folks that, uh, you know, I didn't enjoy being on the track with, um, you know, a couple of the members of the squeaker squad. Uh, I won't mention, uh, not our squeaker squad. We, the A51 has their own squeaker squad. I'm not talking about any of them. <laughs> uh, I'm talking about some of the guys that, that used to run in the, uh, in the street stock series. Um, just dirty drivers. You know what I mean? Like I said, I'm not gonna mention any yeah. names cause I, that's just not something I'll do. Um, but there's, there's quite a few of them that, you know, I, I don't even, I, I don't even race in that series anymore because it's so dirty. You know what I mean? And then it's a shame because the street stocks are my favorite car. Uh, Spencer, Spencer wants to know, is there a specific name that you're thinking of right now when you hear the term rival? Besides um, Chris, that wasn't in a nice way. Not in a nice way. Somebody that I just knew I was going to get wrecked out if I seen him on track. Yeah. Um, I'll, it's one's just synonymous. I'll say Silvestri. <laughs> yeah. um, I think everybody knows that name. <laughs> I think we've all gotten done by Sylvester at least once. Uh, you remember that time, Lou? We were we were all hanging out in Aaron Stream, and uh, he started in front of him. It was in a Canon race, and I think it was at what Southern National or something like that in the daytime. So it was a really slick track, and uh, Lou had just said, "Mark my words, Sylvester is going to try to dump him." And like 20 laps later, it's exactly what happens. Aaron says, shocking development. <laughs> I don't even think it was 20 laps. I think it was like two <laughs> laps <laughs> like right after. Oh, and man. it's it sucks, though, because I every time Aaron gets around somebody that I know is kind of a dirty driver and I mention it on the stream, he gets taken out by him like a lap or two later. And uh, so I just stop predicting it because I don't want to jinx him. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's so funny. Yeah, and and you know, rivalry doesn't necessarily mean you don't like the person. It's usually someone that's around your speed that you want to beat because it lets you know that you're getting faster. And uh, yeah, but in this case, yeah, we know Sylvester is gonna race someone hard for the win. And it was so funny because he called Lou. I think you've done that twice where you've called out like, "Watch out for this guy. He's a wrecker." And then boom, it happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's uh. It's a blessing and a curse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Last week we were talking with Aaron and I, we played word association and I said, uh, I brought up in Caden Honeycutt and he said rival doesn't necessarily mean that Aaron doesn't like him, but, uh, he does want to beat him on the track and we know Caden wants to beat him. So, you know, rivalry doesn't necessarily mean uh, a bad thing. And, uh, one guy actually, uh, we'll, we'll talk about this one guy on the track and you know, I don't have any ill will against him at all. I actually really, really, really like racing with him. But one guy I'm finding out in the league that I'm racing a lot with, he's, we're always right by each other is uh, Gabriel and uh, awesome guy. Love the guy, but we're always racing with each other now. And he's, he's kind of become a rival, not because I don't like him, but because we're just always there and racing hard every single race now. So 
rival doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. Yeah, I agree with that statement 100%. And uh, if I were to like, if, if I were to say who's my rival now on iRacing, I'd, I'd probably say my, my biggest rival. Um, I, I mean, that's a, that's a tough one. I, I, I mean, it'd probably still have to be Chris, um, but maybe. Um, I mean, Cookson, it, mm. it comes to mind. Um, me and him beating bang every time we're on the track together. <laughs> um, James Curl. Um, I really like racing against James Curl. And I, I'm not really as much as a rival to him as he is to me. Mm-hmm. Um, just because I'm, I'm kind of reaching for that brass ring trying to catch him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, those those are my two two biggest ones right now, I think. All right, Lou, here's a question. If you work for iRacing, Drew, turn your microphone off, turn your headset off. You don't need to hear this. Lou, have you ever intentionally wrecked somebody? Yeah. <laughs> let's hear let's hear the story uh, on this. So we're in a race. Uh it was me, uh, my aunt Char, my dad, and my nephew. We're all in the same race together. This is an official race? And, yeah, it's an official race. Um and this was on my alt account running the street stocks. Um on my secondary account just so I can run with them guys. And uh so we're all in a race and this guy comes in and I'm pretty sure he was on a second account too because he was just as fast as me and it was like his second race ever. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, I find it hard to believe at USA somebody is coming in there and, and being as fast as me at USA. So this guy comes in and he's just starts in the back, you know, doesn't qualify, starts in the back and he's working his way through the field and he's just dumping everybody. Mm-hmm. He wrecked my dad, he wrecked my nephew, he wrecked my aunt. He got, you know, he didn't catch up to me per se. Um, I was still about a second and a half up to him, but he was keeping up with me. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, I'm going to go ahead and let off the gas a little bit and, and see what this guy got. I mean, him, you know, started running. He was running me pretty dirty. And then, uh, he pushed me up the track a little bit and which with a good bump and run. I mean, it was one of those instances where it was a good bump and run and he was underneath me at USA and I can still run the high line pretty good. So we're running side by side, and then he just starts dooring the hell out of me. <laughs> um, I was like, all right, you know what? When I see him come up next time, I'm going to let off the gas a little bit, and I'm just going to hook him. So he started coming up the track. I let off the gas a little bit. His his right fender hit my left left bumper, and around he went. And, you, weren't, uh, you weren't trying to wreck him. You were just trying to rattle his cage a little, right? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I knew exactly what was going to happen. Yeah. Um, you know, and I'll never deny that. It's, uh, I, I would never go out of my way to intentionally wreck somebody just because, you know what I mean? But I mean, the yeah. guy was just dirty and, and I was sick of getting beat up. So, you know, I just, I, I took care of the situation. That's right. You mess with the Lou Bull, you get the horns. There's something weird about intentionally wrecking somebody too that, like, after you do it, there's this kind of shock that you just did it. And this, and then afterwards, like, man, I can't believe I did that. And then as you cool down, it's like, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? There's like this staircase going down yeah. of emotion of where like, oh, man, I shouldn't have done that. And uh, believe it or not, Lou, and I don't think people would believe this about me, but I did intentionally wreck a guy once. It was my, um, it was my first ever truck race. It was at Pocono. And... Um, I wasn't very fast in the street stocks, and I wasn't very fast in the K and N yet. But for some reason, when you put me in the, the the truck and in the B car, I was a lot faster than the lower splits. And so I remember I was just working my way up through the track. Uh, yeah, I did. And every, I mean, this guy was running P15. I remember I got put to the back because uh, someone took me around, didn't give me any damage or anything. So I got fresh tires. And he was like P18 or something, and he's going. I mean, you know, Pocono is huge. And he's going all the way up and down the track to try to block me from passing him in P18 when I had I was faster than him by like 1.2 seconds. And so I got on the mic like, hey, man, quit blocking me. Cut it out. So we get to the end of the race, and he'd already blocked me about three or four times. Uh, we, there's like 10 to go. We come in. I had 20 laps on my tires. I take right sides. He stays out. He's on old tires. Extremely slow. So he's up to second place. I'm in third place. Green flag comes out. He uh, he blocks me the entire track, and this is one flat lap to go. He blocks me the entire track. So finally at the end of turn three, I just looped him into the inside and uh, wrecked him. And he was furious. I remember he got a ban just because he started cussing everybody out. And, uh, you know, I felt all vindicated at the time, 
But, uh, you know, it was just a weird feeling after that. I was like, you know what? I'm never, ever going to do that again. And I haven't. Because it's a weird feeling when you, when you know, when you wreck somebody. <laughs> so. Oh, Zimmy says, y'all remember that night Randy and Lou both got banned from iRacing for a week because they admitted they wrecked? Well, here's the thing. I actually reported the guy for his language. And iRacing saw the replay and said, hey, quit wrecking people. So it's already been reported. So I don't have anything to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if anyone wants to ban me for a week, <laughs> it's been more than a week since I've been on the sim, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so iRacing, you, come on now, we're bringing people into the sport now. Don't, don't, don't ban us now. But yeah, so it's a weird feeling. I don't know. Did you, did you feel any regret after you did it, Lou, when you wrecked somebody? No, the dude was dirty, man. <laughs> I, I, I still feel good about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still proud about it. I guess we're just yeah, like I felt really guilty. And, uh, yeah, forgive me, Benny Parsons. I can't believe I did that. Thank you for that donation there, Sammy, by the way. We appreciate that. All right, Lou, let's move yeah. over into the, the, the setup side of running the short tracks and the late models. And uh, <clears throat> even to this day, many of the top drivers that run the official late model series are products of, of Lou Oleski and, and his teachings. But uh, let's just talk a little bit about setting up the late models. Um, if someone wants to begin setting up the late models, where do they need to go to or what do they need to do to get started? Let's say they know nothing about cars. Let's say they're like me, who don't know anything about cars. Well, the, the easiest thing to do now um, to get started is just to join the A51 crew. I mean, we all know that. Yeah. Um, go on there and then uh, then in that section that I have, um, do set up section or whatever, it tells you my process of how I build my baseline for every single Um. And that'd be the easiest thing to do because that baseline is going to be competitive at anywhere. You know what I mean? You just need to start changing stagger, yeah. um, tire pressures a little bit, and the gear ratio. Um, but, I mean, if, if you're trying to jump into a blind, it's so hard to do, um, especially in this sim because things aren't – the physics don't make sense a lot of the times in, in the sim. And to, to get real speed yeah. out of the cars, you have to do um, – you have to do things to the car that sometimes you wouldn't even think of. And uh, it, so it makes it a little bit hard. Dylan asked a question right out the gate. He wants to know uh, tire pressure in short tracks. What what would, what does tire pressures do to the car? That's, that's a huge question, but if you can condense that down. <laughs> well, it is a huge question because it does so many different things. Mm. Um, for example, your starting tire pressures, um, knowing where you want your tire pressures to be after they inflate, after they get hot. Um, but but what it does is, it, is you want to have as much surface um, uh, area on the, the track as possible um, without having your tires rolling over and folding over on themselves. So in the way I look at it is the lower the pressure um, to a to, to a degree, the better, um, because it's going to give you more grip because you're going to have more surface area on the on the pavement. You know what I mean? Um, but th there's so much that goes into it, though, um, especially when you start talking about camber and camber thrust and, and what different tire pressures do with that. It's really hard to condense into a uh, even an hour-long podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's... Uh, uh, Dylan, if you uh, bring it up in the Discord for the A51 community, there'll be people who will tell you all about that. But, I mean, even for each, depending on which tire, what you adjust the air pressure on, it can be a completely different result. So, um, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> but I know on the, the bigger tracks, you kind of start with the higher tire pressures. I don't know why. And you have bigger spreads on them. But, yeah, that's kind of a big question. Okay. So let's talk about... <clears throat> you got a baseline set up from someone, Lou. And... Uh, Let's say you, you like the setup, but you're a little bit loose going into the corner. It feels fine everywhere else. What's the easiest fix for a car that's just loose in and feels good every place else? Well, uh, it's kind of a... On brakes. If on brakes, I'm if, sorry. Okay, it, well, if we're loose on brakes, obviously we're going to look at the brake bias first. Um, but that's not really... like When you're adjusting the brake bias, you're not actually adjusting how loose or tight the car is. Um, it just makes it feel looser, um, having that lower brake bias. I mean, that's the first thing I would look at is brake bias. Um, but if we're, if we're loose in on brakes, um, the, the first thing I'm going to change, if it's not the brake bias 
is probably it's going to start with my my spring rates, um, my rear spring rates. Yeah. And then I just adjust backwards from there because I, I always adjust small first. I don't take big swings in the springs are about this um, not springs. I'm sorry, shocks. And the shocks are about the, the smallest tweak um, that you can make in the sim right now. So I'll, I'll start with the shocks. Um, then if the shocks don't work, um, then I'll move to uh, track bar heights and stuff like that. So, so those of you who are listening, like uh, with with the the brakes, um, when you put them forward, it's a lot easier to control it, and you can put a lot more brake to it without getting loose. And if you put it back, you can stop a lot quicker. But if you have an upset car, it's gonna it's gonna go around. And so, <clears throat> he says brake bias first, and then try messing with the springs. What would be the first spring? Would it be like the right rear? Or? Well, it, I, I said spring, but I, I didn't mean spring. I meant shocks. Oh, shocks. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I would start messing with the shocks. Um, and I would, because the the rear shocks and and the front shocks technically, um, can really change the way the car feels going into a corner, uh, under braking. So I, I would change those, and those are small swings that you can take at it. Mm -hmm. um, and then and then from there, I mean, if if the car is so loose that I can't drive it, then yeah, then I am gonna start looking at springs. Um, then I'm gonna I'm gonna take the right rear down a click or two. Um, but it 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 all depends, man. It all depends on how it feels. That's why it's so hard to um like I, and all the time people ask me you know hey what do you what should i do with my car if it feels like this it's like well i don't know how how your car is set up you know what i mean mm -hmm. like my buddy my buddy cam the other day he wanted me to tell him how to get his car to be more free through center but because it was a team setup he wouldn't give me the setup i'm like well bro i don't i it's hard <laughs> to tell you that makes you know, it hard free up your car when you know what i mean is is it not free because you have way too much spring on your left side of your car is it you know what i mean it's, it's so hard to tell yeah let's say uh well, i guess for the sake of this we'll assume we have the the lou Oleski, um camber thrust set up the baseline and let's say let's say someone now is on throttle coming out of the corner the thing just pushes it feels good entry feels good through the center but when they hit that throttle um it's pushing out it could, would you be able to make a recommendation on how to adjust that or no oh yeah um, if it's pushing coming out, um, then obviously one of the easiest fixes is rear stagger um, is gonna gonna fix that. But then you're also gonna be um, changing your fuel through center, um, so you, you can mess with the rear stagger. Um, you can also um, possibly change the tire pressures on on the right sides. Um, will sometimes help with a car that's pushing coming out. Yeah. Um, and then. Uh, Another thing that you can do is you can get the car to uh, feel a little bit better by taking your uh, your well. With my setups now, I'm only running 650 springs in the back. I wasn't. I'm not running the four and nine anymore. So you can take that 650 and, and bring it up to like a seven and help the car rotate a little bit more uh, coming out. Randy's describing his car at Five Flags. Lou, yeah, actually what I'm helping, <laughs> trying to get you to do is help me win that league. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, so, so <clears throat> in essence, guys, um, listen, these guys, they learn from him, and a lot of these guys know what they're doing, so if you can't speak to Lou, just hit that A51 community uh, and go to the setup area, and the guys are always talking about it there. Um, just an awesome place to learn, and, and again, they learn from Lou. So a lot of people in there have a lot to thank to you, Lou. Yeah, and and I do appreciate that. And and a lot of things now are changing so much uh, on the sim. Not even so much that the physics of the sim are changing, but it's uh, people are learning more and more. Like my setups three seasons ago was <laughs> other than James Curl. You know, three seasons ago, my setups were kicking everybody's butt. Yeah. Now they're not. Um, people figured other new stuff out and, uh, you know, and, and I'm in, it's people in the group too, like Zimmy and, and them guys, they figured new stuff out root. and, uh, root's so it's, yeah. root. Yeah. And, uh, so things are always evolving and, uh, that, that's a really cool thing about being in such a large group, like a 51 is you're, you're in there and you have the ability to learn if you want to learn. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of the things I was telling Beast. I was like, I, was like, I can still hang out with the community, right? And they're like, oh, yeah, of course. I was like, good, because I'd be terrible in the late models without them, <laughs> which is funny. So, yeah, so. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so, guys, hey, we're getting to a portion now where um, we're going to kind of wrap things up. But first, any questions that you guys have for Lou, 
Um, now's the time. Lou's a mysterious man, and uh, we'll just ask him some questions here. We got a great one from Dylan right out the gate. And Spike wants to know, who is Spencer Dickinson in iRacing, he would like to know, would Lou ever race the, the super late model again? Yes. Um, I just watched Aaron's race the other day, and it got me itching to run that car again. Um, yeah, I would. Short answer. He says yes. Is it? Um, is there still something wrong with the setup, or did they fix that? I remember the, the it was like the the right front was broken, right, or something like that. I uh, well, I think it was the left front that was broken, but uh, I I don't know if they fixed it or not, or if people just found a way to set the car up to to work around it. Um, either way, though, uh, that used to be my favorite car in the sim. So yes, I would absolutely go back to racing that car. Yeah, if I knew how to do it, again, if I knew how to set it up properly like I have been with the late model recently, I'd be in that as well. Uh, Dylan wants to know, Lou, why you no race no more? And uh, we kind of talked about that a little bit, but if you want to answer that again, Lou. Yeah, just work. Uh, that's all there is to it. Uh, the amount of work that I put in right now is ridiculous. So it, it just keeps me away from this. Uh, MLG Steve wants to know, Lou, your procedure for setting up cars, is that only for late models or will it work for all oval cars? Uh, it definitely works for late models. Um, it, I tried using it with the super late models after the car broke and it didn't work very well with it. Um, it some aspects of it worked for the SK mods. Um, but mostly it's just for the late models, just because of how that car is set up and, and how you can really get that car to dig into the front. Um, the, the front end, the digging in the ground. I mean, um, it's it's mostly geared towards that. And but there's things with that setup that you can use in other other cars. Like we use a lot of those same um, principles when we're setting up the beast trucks. Um, you know, we, we use some of the same camber thrust principles in that setup. But there's other stuff that we have to change too. We should have talked about this at the top of the hour in iRacing news. But Aaron wants to know, Lou. Are you looking forward to the stadium trucks? Absolutely. It looks like a blast. I, in, I, I never followed the stadium trucks ever until I seen that they're coming to iRacing. And I've been binge watched as much stadium truck races as I possibly can on YouTube. So, yeah, it's, oh my it gosh. looks awesome. And I'm, I'm looking forward. To it. I'm going to be terrible at it, but you know I'm going to give it a whirl. I, I That's so cool that they're bringing them in. I remember it was rumored. I'm like, yeah, right. And then two weeks after hearing about the rumor, they actually did it. I was so shocked. Yes, he's looking forward to it. He's going to be fast in it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to be slowing it for a while unless I devote some time to it, which I probably won't because I only have time for really um, ovals. Rachel, who donated 300 bits, thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you for that. i got to talk to you guys about that at the end of the, the stream too. What flavor chapstick does Lou use? <laughs> Uh, whatever my wife's wearing, um, I, I don't apply it myself. Um, this is a family friendly. So the show, only so. time I get, yeah. So the <laughs> only time I get chapstick is when I give my wife a kiss. So uh, yeah, that, that's it. Um, probably some kind of cherry <laughs> is what she, she uses. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. My wife usually has some Burt's Bees or something on there. She, you know, she's been on this thing where she's forced me to put it on there because my lips get really chapped, but I don't care. I'll just like bite the skin off, and it makes her mad. And uh, okay. So I guess last question is how many times do you apply chapstick daily? Looks like looks like we already applied that. Oh, I get tricked in that, Dylan. Never mind that question, Lou. Okay, so hey. Well, Lou, I just, uh, man, I can't express, first of all, how thankful we are what you did for the late model community, single-handedly bringing it back to where it's, you know, two splits even after midnight. That's awesome. Um, I want to thank you for being on the stream tonight and teaching people about short track racing and giving us an update on you because... Um, you're kind of the Mr. Big Popular guy now on podium, and uh, we just, you know, we can't thank you enough, my friend. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's no problem, and, and uh, it's something else that I wanted to mention in the stream is is I really appreciate all you guys too. Um, you guys and gave me a place to race because, like you said, no races were going official um, right. after midnight, and those are the only races I can ever get in. I don't get home from work until two o'clock in the morning. Um, or that's, that was my previous schedule. Now I just don't get home at all. But, uh, uh, you know, I wasn't getting home until two o'clock in the morning. And if it wasn't for everybody, uh, being willing to learn and willing to race, then I would never, ever, uh, have races to race. 
So I, I appreciate everybody, and that's why I did what I did and, and started sharing my setups is because it started out with a selfish notion of, hey, I, I want to be able to race, and then it turned into, man, this community is awesome, and I just really want these guys to get faster. And then the whole thing with Aaron and 851 kicked off, and the rest is history. That's crazy, man, because, yeah, those guys now, you get in any official race, like around from 8 o'clock to midnight, the whole top five is probably going to be 851. Unless, like, Curler Williamson gets in there or Todd and Garen, you know? That's funny how that works. Right, right. <laughs> and, it's, and it's awesome. It really is awesome to, uh, to see that. And, and for me, I, I get a bigger thrill out of seeing that, seeing how good um, those A51 guys are getting. Um, I get a bigger thrill out of that than, than when I do good on the track just because it, it feels like I'm, I've left a small legacy behind. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And, you know, I felt like I, was, I helped build uh, you know what we got and I'm, I'm proud of it and, and Aaron should be proud of it too you should be proud of it everybody that's been around since the beginning should be proud of of just the massive community that we built and the the, the sheer number of just good people not even good racers just crazy. good people is is just crazy I've never seen so many people come together in such a close way and people I, I don't even ever see arguments it's 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 nuts and it's uh it, I, I think we're all really blessed to uh to be part of that funny you should bring that up um the, the other night i had to ban somebody for the first time ever and it's jackson who's back in by the way but he gets banned <laughs> about once every three weeks or so but in doing that i had to go through the list of all the other people who were banned and we've only ever had to ban one other person and that's because he was spanning and spamming intentionally stuff he shouldn't have been and it just goes to show how good those guys are in that community so go check them out hey guys if you want to help lou um, first of all, subscribe to his YouTube channel. He's going to be starting putting stuff up there more often in the summertime. I'm going to try to help him with that, make him some cool thumbnails and maybe make him some overlays and stuff like that. You can also uh, get some information about me and Lou and maybe some of our schedule here at beastracing.net. Go ahead and check that out. Um, show the team some love. I, I can tell you right now, the guys at Beast, um, they very much appreciate when you guys go in those races and you let them know how much uh, you, you appreciate them and, and blowing them up and... Um, we definitely appreciate you guys. So, very cool. Very yeah, cool. Yeah, it is very cool. We, we actually picked up a new sponsor because of it. So, I, I thank you all for that, by the way. Um, yeah. You guys, every single time I, I, I uh, you know, do the whole call to arms, you guys always show up. And uh, mm -hmm. like I said, we got a new sponsor because of it. And, and that's all because of you guys. I really appreciate it. Yeah, so keep showing up. We appreciate that. I, I've got to thank you guys personally, too, at not just A51 or Beast Racing, who we – Definitely, definitely appreciate and all the guys at Beast. But uh, yeah, this microphone right here that I'm using, um, I have this right now, and hopefully it sounds a lot better. But I got this because you guys um, gave to the stream, and you guys have been generous to me. And I just want to say thank you so much because um, otherwise I'd be wearing that headset and I'd sound like I have a lisp right now. And uh, I just appreciate your guys' support. And I just want you to know um, the money that is given to the stream will be used to improve it. So thank you guys for your support. Um, Lou appreciates it. I appreciate it. Aaron appreciates it. Mark appreciates it. We all appreciate it a ton. Rachel appreciates it when she streams. And I guess we're going to cut her down there, Lou. Any last words that you have to say? Uh, that'll do it, man. I got it all out. I appreciate you, man. All right. Thanks so much for stopping by. Hey, guys, you know what it's time for. Let's go ahead and hop into John Theodore's stream. He's the only guy that I really have on my friends list on Twitch right now that's on. Um, and when we get in there, uh, go ahead and just say Lou Oleski. That'll be the driver. Lou, I don't know if you're familiar with my stream or not, but that's what we do whenever we end the stream. We hop into another person's stream, we rate it, and then we say a driver's name. And then today we're going to do Lou Oleski. You guys ready? <laughs> That should be interesting. <laughs> Here we go. Make sure you guys hit that raid button up there. Uh, we need well, we need a lot more than that, guys. You got to do better than that before we hop in there. There we go. Ooh, that jumped up really quick. Remember, we're saying Lou Oleski. Thank you guys for stopping by, and we'll catch you guys in the next race.